I'm Brian Batista, and my friends call me Bunny, and I hope you're prepared to get your hands a little bit dirty, because today we're in the studio talking about one of my favorite art materials, and it also happens to be the one that probably mankind has used to create pictures for the longest period of time. Back in the time of cave paintings, 30,000 or so years ago, they were probably reaching into the fire and taking out burnt and charred sticks drawing on cave walls. This is episode 61, Charcoal. It's charcoal time. There are many types of charcoal available from compressed charcoal, vine charcoal, even charcoal in pencils or charcoal as powder. We're gonna look at what the differences are. Essentially, it's wood burned in the absence of oxygen. I've even reached into my fireplace, pulled out a piece of charcoal and drawn with that. This vine charcoal is made out of burnt willow, whereas the compressed charcoal is often held together with some sort of glue, gum, wax, or even clay. We're gonna look at how these charcoals work and what the differences are between each one. I just wanna say I'm supported by no brand. These are just the ones I use and whatever charcoal you choose to use is up to you. We are gonna start our review with the lightest and most ethereal and that is powder charcoal, which you can buy like this or create yourself. I learned this little trick from a student of mine. If you put your sanding paper inside a Ziploc bag, you can sand, keep your drawing packages clean while collecting some of the charcoal dust in here. This can be applied with your finger, uh, with a brush, but because it's not like compressed charcoal and doesn't have uh, binder agents or glues in it, it tends to be very light, really erasable, and also doesn't stick as readily to the surface of your paper. This chart is an awagami bamboo paper, which is soft and raglite, but has some texture. And you'll see that this powder charcoal barely wants to stick and creates a very nice, soft, cloud-like appearance. Our next charcoal and light one is what we refer to as vine charcoal. More often than not is willow, but it is actually the branch of a tree. It's very light, it's great for starting your drawing and making those light marks because it's very erasable. I have a variety of different brands and hardnesses and really it's more of a tactile thing because they all are very lightly attached to the paper and release very easily. The next section of charcoal I uh, like to call the woodless pencils. Now these are compressed charcoal, they're round in pencil form and depending on the brand I have Pentallic or Marie here, you have a different thickness of a plastic or other material that goes around that you can remove with a knife or with sandpaper. These come in soft, medium and hard like many other charcoals, but the one downfall to these being round, they'll roll off the table. And the one thing that I've noticed is they're extremely brittle and when they do fall, they break into a million pieces. So one way to do it is to have a fancy holder, stick it between your erasers and they'll last a lot longer, but they do create a rich and beautiful line as we'll see here. They can be a little bit gritty, but based on the hardnesses, it releases more or less of the nice, dark, rich, compressed charcoal. The next section of charcoal are the wood pencil charcoal. So these are bound together with clay or glue and then have the wood on top, which you have to sand off or remove with a knife or pencil sharpener. What's great about these is you can get some fine detail and also keep your hands really clean. I love having these in my kit and you can really see that the different binding agents give you quite a different effect with how much charcoal it allows to lay down on the paper. Now we're gonna look at compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal tends to come in these rectangular blocks. Now you can get them really cheap brands, Artist Loft and whatnot. You buy the whole pack. You can also get them in different values of gray. Some of them are more pastel-y and creamy and it just depends on the binder. You're really gonna have to test a few of these out, but I have found that these make beautiful, thick, rich and dark marks. This is where you start to really see the dark, rich blacks. These are Jack Richeson compressed charcoal. They're compressed charcoal, but they're not square. They're round. They're super rich 
and dark and even. The texture is quite fine and you almost get like a sparkly mica when you start rubbing it in. These are really beautiful to use. They come in this wooden box with foam in it. So keeping them in there, they're not gonna roll around or fall out. Let's take a look at what these can do on paper. Probably the richest and nicest, blackest of blacks of all the blacks we have here. Last but not least of the charcoals is my favorite brand, Nitrum. Uh, Nitrum, which is Martin spelled backwards because the guy who started making these was named Martin. Uh, these are beautiful, long, square charcoals. They come in a variety of darknesses and hardnesses, and they have this wonderful little piece of paper at the bottom, so that when you're using them, they have like a light, nice long reach, but you can keep your hands very clean. I like the square because it doesn't roll off the table when I'm working, so I'm not breaking a lot of charcoal or having a lot of waste. Plus, it's really long, which gives me a lot of control. I like the variety and how hard you can press and work this material into the paper. It allows you to get the most variety of values that you need for realistic artwork. Doug Swinton got a hold of me and said that the nitrum or nitrum was in and I got really excited and treated myself to this. What we have here comes with some uh, charcoals but is a baton and this baton will hold the different sizes of charcoal and it'll give you a reach for a more painterly approach to wave around like Harry Potter and to create your artwork with. So the goal of this charcoal chart is to give you an idea how they behave. First with a chamois, which you could also use felt, but that really allows you to rub in the different circles. You can see how heavy and how dark some of these go. I follow it up with a soft brush and a firmer brush application. Then we go with the stump, which really is there to remove material or to press it into the paper, and a tortillon, which is different. It's a wound up piece of newsprint rather than pulp of paper. Next, we go into the ways of really removing it. First, with kneadable eraser pressing and lifting the material out, followed by a vinyl eraser, rubbing more vigorously. And this paper, in general, does like to hold on to material so it doesn't race it out completely. And for the final fun, rubbing it in with the fingers to see how the oils and the pressure smudge it in. I wouldn't be complete without talking about white charcoal or what's marketed as white charcoal. It can be one of two things. They do come in pencil or compressed form, but they're actually not charcoal at all. You can tell it's white, it's not burnt. They're actually chalk and some of them are uh, titanium pigment. Depending on the binder, you get different surfaces, but really it's just a fine, fine grade of chalk. That being said, if you're using it, it's a good idea to erase out the areas where you want to increase the highlights. Because I've found that using white charcoal or chalk on my works, uh, it'll go gray if there's already charcoal underneath. This is in no way meant to cover everything, but I hope it gives you a general idea of what you should be looking for when you purchase these art materials. I hope that little exploration and demo was insightful and helpful. And if you'd like more videos like this, leave some comments below. More importantly, it helps me know that you like these if you subscribe. If you're interested in classes or knowing more, you can visit atelierartista.com. Now, I want you to go get your hands dirty and do some charcoal drawing. Ciao for now.